All right, so we're heading out back here, back to our headliner, uh, doing one last quick coat on it. Um, it looks pretty good, but it can just be that little much better. So here we are. Um, it's looking great. Just a few little spots. I just want to make sure are perfect. You can kind of see some of the brushing that I've done from using that brass brush. But uh, I got to say, for the $10 investment um, in terms of paint to get a black headliner, uh, that's pretty good in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and get the last coat on that. Then we're going to get back inside and start focusing on getting the rest of this interior together. So one thing that we're going to be doing is actually I'm going to re-dye the A-pillar here. Now I don't need to do this on the driver's side because it's actually got the aftermarket cover with the dual gauge, um, gauge pod mounted in there. Uh, but the one thing about the pre-90 cars is these are actually not the same black as you would get in a black interior. So if I were to install this, it would actually look more almost like a charcoal color compared to the dash and everything else that's going in. So it's really important and you see a lot of guys make this mistake. The same thing with actually, and I'll grab it now, is this bezel cover. They don't dye this and they keep it the same and this is like a charcoal color. So some guys go ahead and put the actual 90 to 93 style one in and it gets rid of their idiot light panel down here. Um, other guys obviously put these in. Um, I am undecided. I'll probably talk to the buyer and see if he wants me to dye this or if he wants the 90 to 93 style without the idiot lights. Some people like a low fuel light, especially when you actually have a functioning gas gauge like you do in this car. So what I'm going to do essentially, I've already sprayed this down with spray nine. And as I was mentioning, the prep is the most important part in dyeing any plastic component. I've tried all kinds of paints. I've tried your Krylons, I've tried your um, Duplicolors, uh, SEM, DuPont, um, that you mix and you actually run through a spray gun. And you know what? The paint almost really doesn't matter. This is what matters, the prep. And a lot of guys do not spend enough time prepping their plastics and I have interiors that have been dyed for over 10 years, uh, like in the Lightning. The door panels have some nicks and a few little spots here and there and the door sill plates, obviously from 10 years of high use, um, high heat being in Dubai, shipped around and whatnot. But the dash doesn't have a mark on it. Um, and I've done so many car interiors at this point. Uh, like I said, I've tried them all and it's all really at the end of the day comes down to the prep. So. Once I've essentially scuffed this all down with a purple scotch pad, that'll give a nice um, bit of uh, prepped sanded surface for the paint to stick to. I'm actually gonna run some glass cleaner um, on this and wipe that down. And then finally, um, some actual, excuse me, some brake clean. And this will make sure that there is no grease and everything is nice and clean. Um, and ready to go and essentially yeah this should hold up for the rest of the life of the car especially considering it is an a-pillar it's not going to get much traffic but the same process and procedure applies for any plastic that you're doing so i'm just going to go ahead spray this down It'd be better if I had someone following me around with the camera, but what happens when you're a one-man show? So, fresh shop towel, some uh, glass cleaner. This is really good, guys. Um, glass cleaner, I find, has a lot of purposes, um, and it doesn't, uh, it's not going to affect anything or cause, you know, some people use, uh, and I've tried it actually in the past, uh, using I forget what I'm trying to say right now. Not paint thinner, the other one. Anyways, sometimes guys complain that their plastics get sticky um, or that it's starting to melt them a little bit. So again, now I'm just gonna do a quick brake clean spray.
All right, so this piece of trim is now ready for paint. So in this case, I'm going to be using Krylon's Color Master. Uh, this is a semi-gloss black. A lot of people play around with the different colors. They think, oh, do I need satin? Do I need flat? Do I need gloss? Gloss is definitely way too shiny and will just kind of make your interior look like it was painted. Um, it also just looks like way too much armor oil uh, is applied. So definitely don't go with gloss. Flat, obviously flat, kind of looks like this, to be honest, in most cases. And then there's a toss-up between satin versus semi-gloss, and it really depends on the paint that you're going to use. So, to me, this Krylon, if you get the satin, almost looks like a traditional flat black. Um, so the semi-gloss is kind of the nice medium in between uh, in terms of this application. So this is what will actually look and match the factory 90 through 93 black interior trim and plastic. So this is what we're going to use um, two light coats. I'm going to go outside and do it out there. It's raining. Um, so I got to kind of go underneath a little bit of an overhang. So we'll go ahead and get that done. And just to give you an idea, here's a piece that I've done earlier and you can see the difference in the black. So charcoal versus black. It's all in the prep. Yeah, it's not really about the paint. No. We've proven that. That you can buy the most expensive interior paint <laughs> and the cheapest interior paint, but if you don't prep properly, they both suck. See, and I didn't prep him because I said that earlier somewhere in some footage, and you just came back and said the same thing. I remember the first time we dyed interiors, it was like $800 for the paint. And then we got cans from, what was that, Tool Time? Yeah, yeah. the cans, like enough paint to do the interior for like 200 bucks. I was like, what's happening here? And we don't recommend white dashes. No. White is extremely hard to keep clean, that's for damn sure. That and at nighttime underneath the street lights, yeah. the, the yeah. glare makes you not be able to see any of the corners. Things that you learn after you've done it. So here we are, we're about to paint our rear plastics. A couple nice and easy coats. Um, they were spray nined, scotch padded, uh, glass cleaned, and then brake cleaned. So again, it's all about in the prep in terms of how well the paint will stick. So let's get started. So here's coat number one, looking like some black plastics, if you ask me. So the one important thing is that even if you got original black rear plastics, which means they would have come out of a 90 through 93, the seatbelt mounting hole is actually up here, which means you would need to drill a new hole and then find a way to cover that up. Some people install tweeters, uh, some people leave the hole and just hope that the seat belt covers it but uh, we decided to go this route here and just paint these panels i didn't want to paint them i wanted to keep the blue but uh, i couldn't get a hold of the red ones that were uh, supposed to come out today and in essence of getting the job done we're just going to paint these up so i'm going to let these dry get a second coat on let them dry again get things installed there we go so it's just sitting in place here. Probably uh, we're waiting for our pieces to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and screw the sun visors in. Gotta find the, the screws for them. And we definitely have to paint our penis light because that hasn't been done yet. And um, other than that, 
obviously will clean up a little bit of my mess that I made, but we'll be good to go. So I'm just in here and I'm looking at the emergency brake. Uh, the cables actually rub on the drive shaft a little bit. You can hear that. So this car does have an aftermarket aluminum drive shaft, probably because um, of its a bit bigger diameter um, could be part of the issue. So essentially, um, there is a way to modify the handle and it looks like somebody has already done that. Uh, there's a spot weld here on the gear um, that everything, so the release and everything works great. Just essentially you need to drive with the handle about here uh, before the cables will stop rubbing on the drive shaft. So um, not much that can be done here. going to go ahead and put the center console back in. And then uh, once the car is up in the air, we can have a look and see exactly. Um, I know there is a, a threaded portion. We should be able to adjust these cables enough uh, to get them to stop rubbing the drive shaft. So we can obviously leave the handle down as there's nothing more annoying than having your parking brake light on on your dash while driving around. So let's go ahead and get that center console uh, put back in here and uh, from there, we can reinstall the glove box door and then we can start looking at the panel underneath the steering column and pretty much get this interior buttoned up. good news uh, no rear seat is needed because the buyer dropped off this rear seat delete kit who knows what this rusted pile of shit is maybe we should focus on you guys for a little bit 